Good evening. The headlines, BL unions and management have agreed to more talks tomorrow in an attempt to avert Sunday's strike. England's cricket tour of India will now go ahead. And Scotland Yard have new ideas about the IRA bombings. And now these and the other stories with subtitles. The management of BL and union leaders have accepted an urgent invitation from the conciliation service ACAS for a new meeting to try to avert Sunday's strike. Before the meeting starts tomorrow, the industry secretary, Mr. Patrick Jenkin, has agreed to see the union leaders, but he says he won't negotiate with them. The chairman of BL, Sir Michael Edwards, will attend the meeting together with members of his board. Sir Michael went to see the opposition leader, Mr. Foote, today and asked him to use his influence with the unions. In spite of these late moves, however, our industrial correspondent says the mood on the shop floor seems to be that the strike is now inevitable and will go ahead on Sunday. And Fords have offered their workers a pay rise of just over 4%. They want to improve efficiency too to pay for it. The union said the offer was contemptuous. They'd asked for 20 pounds a week for everyone, which would be an increase of at least 16%. England's winter cricket tour of India is definitely on. The Indian Cricket Board of Control say the team as selected is welcome. So despite their South African connections, Jeff Boycott and Jeff Cook will, after all, be allowed to play. And Britain's sports minister, Neil McFarlane, has greeted the announcement as great news for all cricket lovers. Scotland Yard's anti-terrorist branch say they believe one or more women took part in the recent IRA bombings in London. The search is now on for an IRA active service unit, which the Yard describes as the five most wanted people in Britain. Two members of the Voluntary Euthanasia Society, Exit, have been found guilty of helping people to commit suicide. The General Secretary of Exit, Nicholas Reid, has been jailed for two and a half years. Mark Lyons, who's 70, was given a two-year suspended sentence. Sweden has alerted her forces to prevent any attempt by the Russians to free their grounded submarine. The Swedes won't free the sub unless the captain explains why he was near their naval base. Two Soviet diplomats have now arrived to be present if the captain goes ashore for questioning. The pound has been making strong headway today after news that Saudi Arabia is to cut oil production. From November, they'll impose a ceiling of eight and a half million barrels a day, a cut of about a million barrels of oil a day. There was swift reaction to the announcement on the foreign exchanges, and the pound closed up 2.8 cents against the dollar. Five hijackers of a domestic airliner in Costa Rica have freed most of their hostages, and the plane has now taken off. They handed over the hostages after the Costa Rican government met their demands and freed six Nicaraguan prisoners. Two Britons were among the hostages released from the plane. It's not yet known where the plane's now heading. Conservationists have clashed with hunters on the island of Roscombe in the Orkneys as they tried to save young seals. Today they had more success with a change of tactics. They stood between seals and guns and the hunters gave in killing killing only four calves. Yesterday, 200 were killed, while conservationists tried to stop the cull by spraying blue dye on the valuable pelts. Newsnight at 10.45 looks, to the strike of B looks ahead to the strike of BL, due to start this weekend, and talks to the two union leaders most directly involved. Alex Kitson of the Transport and General Workers' Union and Sir John Boyd of the Engineering Workers' Union, both of whom are tied up in last-ditch attempts to avert the strike, will be interviewed by Vincent Hanna. That's Newsnight at a quarter to 11. Now a look at the weather.